Boy's Life of Despair, Daily Life. Every time you overcome a class trial here at Hope's Peak, a whole new world will open up to you. Ooh, some part what of it's opening heck? up. 2A. Oh, 2A! 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 Where is it? 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 Where's the sexiest room in the school? Oh, there it is! We found it! Is she here? Oh shit, there's blood. Raise your buckets! Raise your buckets! We're inside 2B! from the Hope's Peak Academy Executive Office. However, Hope's, Pe Hope's Peak Academy must now lower this curtain on its glorious history for the time being. This decision was not an easy one to make, but serious issues beyond our control have made it necessary. But make no mistake, this is not the end for Hope's Peak Academy. We intend to reopen our doors as soon as the issues forcing our closure have been resolved. That being said, this is the end for now. It looks like a laptop. The laptop looks pretty old and it's all covered in dust. So... It's broken. I tried pressing the power button earlier, but nothing happened. Okay, there's a coin in the clock. I'm calling it right now. There's a coin in the clock. There's a coin in the clock. Here we go. We're getting a coin. We're getting a coin. Fuck, yes, yes. Fucking called it. Called it. I'm psychic. If you want to unlocker the locker room, you have to swipe your personal e handbook across the card reader next to the door. Uh -huh. However, to ensure maximum security with each locker room, only a boy's handbook can open the boy's locker room, and the same goes for the girl. Okay, so someone's gonna die in the pool, and and that's gonna be an important important piece of information. I am thirsty. Like, um, for a drink or? Hey, Fumi, would you make me some tea? Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> I mean. Considering how she's dressed and everything, like, she's probably like Yifumi's, like, red kryptonite, right? Almost, almost certainly. Almost certainly. Milk tea, if you please. Well, well, why me? Let's see. Your roundish figure reminds me of the owner of the coffee shop I used to frequent. Yifumi reappeared with a tray in hand, the gentle aroma growing stronger as he approached. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Oh. Wait. She cocked her head to the side and threw the cup as hard as she could at the wall crash what what the hey, hey what are you doing my little white rabbit mm. i hate this kind of tea um, uh, um i don't yeah you totally are okay yes indeed you're gonna you're starting to enthrall hifumi imagine we are at a coffee shop just any normal everyday cafe i sit down and i order some tea they then ask me would you like lemon or milk now further imagine that I replied, ah yes, I would like milk tea, please. In this case, along with my tea, they may bring me a small container of milk, yes? <sighs> but this is not for me. I am among those who prefer the milk to be part of the process from the outset. Adding milk during the brewing process is gross, man. You, you, you okay, you, you get, you get the, you get the cup, you put the tea bag in the cup, or, or the pot, if you're using a pot, whatever, and then you, you, you pour the hot water into, 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 into the cup, you stir it around like crazy, you squeeze the tea bag a little bit to get it all saturated with water, then you let it stew for a little while or steep for a while, then you take the tea bag out, then you put the sugar in if you're having sugar, then you put the milk in, then you turn it stir around. That's how you make tea. What, what are you fucking, fucking talking about putting the milk in while, while the tea bag's in? That makes it all gross. That's gross. <laughs> Why even bother creating a menu if you are not going to offer the highest level of quality? Why do you have to ruin the cup? What does the cup do to you? Well, well um, we don't actually have a menu. You little bitch. You little bitch. All right. That does not matter. Hurry up and bring me what I asked for, swine. Say what? what? Yeah! Oh, okay, your little piggy will bring it. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that, that was easy, wasn't it, Celeste? Well done. Well played, Celeste. Your little piggy will bring it right out. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. You want to say hello? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Did you add the milk during the brewing process? I didn't. You make it again. I did, but I've had tea like that and it was actually good. They used to make it like that. Little thing. little piggy make it again. They used to make it at work. Like really? Was it gross? No, I liked it. It was a different flavor to it though. See, if I was committed to the bit, I would smash the cup against the wall, but I don't want to. Okay, a coin in the, it fell down in the seat. Come on. That's just a given. Yes. Okay, we're back. We're back on it. We're back on it. To kill your own friends is is it's horrific. It's horrific. <laughs> friends, who decided that? Yeah, exactly. There's no Ross and Rachel. Huh? There's no Joey. Well, <laughs> how you doing? Where's a cactus? Where's a mini cactus? We need to give her a mini cactus. 
Mm. Well, now this is interesting. I must admit, I'm intrigued. Can I hold on to it? Oh, she liked it. She liked it. I get the impression that she liked it. That's good. Hina's ultimate ability. She's training for the Olympics and nice body. Hina's the ultimate swimming pro, of course. Correct. Well, asked and answered. It would seem. Then your pleas of camaraderie are true. Really? That was your question? Damn. Do you want to go right upside down on the wall? What school did you used to go to before you came here? So. Before I came here? I guess I was living abroad. Abroad? Was it an exchange program or do your parents work overseas or something? My parents, I suppose. Wow, the question marks. Anyway, okay, so she was living abroad because of her dad's job. So what kind of work does he do? Foreign government, top secret clearance. Okay. Is she a spy? Is she like a secret agent? <sighs> or she's the, the, the daughter of a secret agent? And she's aspiring to be it? Actually, I do this myself every morning. Go on. You just strip down your waist, go on, then take a dry towel and start rubbing down your bare skin. Oh my god, what? Oh. Nope, can't think of a single thing this is good for. What do you mean? I, I, th I think I made her mad. She probably thinks worse of me now. Really? You can give bad presents? Yoga? Yoga. It's, yeah, it's yoga. Yep, totally, totally yoga. Towel treatment. Bamboo beat down. I love going out on my apartment balcony, stripping down, feeling the wind on my skin, and doing some good old-fashioned towel treatment. God, it feels so amazing. I never let a morning pass without getting a good rub. <laughs> All right, there it is. I was wondering if it was being sincere or not, but there it is. There's the line. Okay, yeah, they, they knew what they were doing. All right, there it is. I'm just proud you're dating Morgana in this game. Wait, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? Aoi is Morgana's voice actress? What? Furious typing. Cassandra Lee Morris, video game, Persona 5 Morgana, Denken Rampa, Aoi Ash. <sighs> Oh god. Oh god. Operator 60 in near Tomina? Alright, Owie's off the menu. I'm done. Just a second. Shut up, you it is more <sighs> now I hear it. I hear it. God damn you, chat. She's ruined. Oh, Owie is like a, a a hot waifu robot being powered by Morgana on on like like some foot pedals and some levers inside of her now in my head. God damn it, she's ruined. She's fucking ruined. Oh, wanna go outside? Aren't you tired? You should go to bed. Oh, oh, no, no, you wanna go to the baths? No, you can't. It's bedtime, you can't do that. Oh, it's raining, you should stay inside. Like, Just imagine you played this first. Oh, wow. What would I think about Morgana? What a, what, a, what would I want to star 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 the cat? Nah, I don't think so. So Morgana girl confirmed, right? Right? Morgana is a girl confirmed. That's it, right? Morgana is payback for crosshair and pray you did this to yourself. <laughs> well played chat, well played. Kyoko is on, really? Okay, what should I do today? Not hanging out with Aoi, because that's Morgana. Fuck that. Fuck that. We gave Morgana a thong. Oh, God. We gave Morgana a thong. For characters who can control their buttocks. Oh, no. Alright, I'm going with this one. I'm going with this one. Thank you. Thank you, Makoto. <laughs> you, this is the first time I've ever gotten something like this. I get the impression that she liked it. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're in. We're in. We're in. No. No. What's wrong, Chihiro? Um. Ah, it hurts. Huh? Did you get hurt, Chihiro, when you fell from heaven? You know? Oh, well, not really. I got bit by a mosquito last night. What? How did it get in? How did a mosquito get in? Well, I felt it bite me and I looked down at it, but I didn't do anything. I just sat there and watched it suck my blood. All right, should have given her the whip. Should have given her the whip. All right, this girl's freaky. He likes school. He likes order. Do we have a swastika? Rose hip tea. 
A herbal tea said to promote beauty and wellness. You can so yeah, okay, let's give him that. I see. Hmm, maybe I was wrong about you, Makoto. Let's continue to deepen our relationship, shall we? Does that mean he liked it? Oh, he liked hmm. it. We're going deep. What you like to do in your spare time? Listen to me. Study, of course. I'm a student, aren't I? A student must be studying. Must be a studying professional. <laughs> Aha, this is fun. Okay, my turn, Makoto. What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, you know, just normal stuff. Watch TV, play video games. But maybe there is a good reason, like getting into something and talking to people about it. So maybe, actually, it is studying. Seriously, uh, relating to your friends. You know how it's useful. It helps give you something to talk about with other people. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is ridiculous! I once was blind, but now I see. I tried making friends, but whenever I would make conversation, it would die after a few minutes. And now I finally found the answer. I see! I need to study more games, more TV shows. I let it get to me. I waste all that time. I never saw the blind spot in my studies. I'm a complete embarrassment. I'm not qualified to even be on the morals committee, let alone lead it. You've taught me a most valuable lesson. You've earned my respect and the title of professor. Hey, damn Come it. Come on, Makoto. You've got to be our witness. <laughs> Witness to what? What? This guy's been talking shit about me since day one, calling me a coward and shit like that. You're corrupt! You are a coward. That's why you turn to violence to solve your problems. You okay bite. then, let's throw down. Prove you've got what I don't got. You hear me? I accept your challenge. <laughs> I didn't realize his hair stuck out that far. Look how far his head sticks out. He's like a dinosaur man. What the fuck is with his hair? <laughs> Bahaha, <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? Bahaha, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? Hear me? Friendship between men is stronger than blood. A woman could never understand. Ain't that right? What you just said, bro, that was cool <laughs> shit. <laughs> I should get a tattoo of it. He's here. <laughs> He's really here. You sound excited, Toko. You go talk to him if you want to so bad. I can't. I don't want to interrupt him. I think Toko wants to bang a catchy. <laughs> Get out and go take a bath. You smell. <sighs> Don't make me repeat Don't myself. Don't say it again. Go now before your stench latches onto the entire room. God damn! What 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 a Chad! What a Chad! Chad Catchy. That's his new name. Chad Catchy. Chad Catchy. To go that far. <laughs> he must be really concerned about me. Huh? <laughs> He told me to, to take a bath and everything. He must really care ab about my well-being. Give us your waifu tier list while we're getting presents in the, in this game. Uh, I like Sayaka. I, I I like I like Sayaka's attitude. Uh, she tried to pin a murder on us, so that just shows like that she she has she has some spunk and intelligence and and she's resourceful. That just makes me respect her even more. Yeah, that, that didn't turn me off. So, so, so Sayaka is my favorite. She's also unattainable now, so that makes her even better. Um, so, so Sayaka, Sayaka top tier. Uh, I really like Kyoko, so Kyoko's probably number two. Um, despite the voice actress, Aoi's probably number three. Um, and then I don't know after that. Af after that, it's kind of, kind of, eh. No, we'll give her the water lover. <laughs> Hehe, <laughs> how thoughtful. This is why I like you, Makoto. Oh, she likes us, she likes us. Or, I mean, not like, 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 not that kind of like. I can't do anything in here. If I can't move around, I'm gonna die like a bunny rabbit. But I always, but I always heard rabbits die from loneliness. Ooh, that was kind of smooth, Makoto. Oh shit, Mako Makoto busting out the moves. Did he did he learn something from from the exchange with Chad Ketchy? That that was pretty smooth. Well done. So, I've decided to come up with a new way to motivate you. So this time it's... Embarrassing memories and secrets. I quickly snatched the envelope with my name written on it. I nervously pulled out what was written on it. <laughs> this is a secret. Makoto went to bed until he was in fifth grade. Who gives a shit? You're in a life or death situation. You're gonna kill someone just so they don't find out you wet the bed until you're in fifth grade? Well, hold on, hold on. That was probably like last year, right? All right, maybe it's more serious. You have 24 hours. If someone doesn't become blackened by then, all your deepest, darkest, most embarrassing, embarrassingest secrets will be exposed to the world. All right, well, so someone's could be like super, super dark and serious, right? Like. 
you, you know what? Like, 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 I, I, I accidentally like killed someone when they were younger, or they they were like sexually assaulted or something. Like, like, like so, so, someone's is probably way goddamn worse than you know Makoto wet the bed until fifth grade. Like, like what what the hell? I I think you guys should have to talk about it. I agree. I agree with Hitler guy, like, or, or Nazi guy. Hey, Owie. Bloodlust? Really? Oh, wow. For real? I did not see that coming. Really? Holy shit. Danganronpa. <laughs> a murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. And at the scene of each crime, the word bloodlust is written in the, victim, in the victim's own blood. Oh, it's Genocide Jack? Genocide Jack! Genocide Jack. Well, why? Why? Oh shit! She's 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 gone full nine eve. She's tugging on her braid. Oh. No. Oh, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Maybe it's Genocide Jane. In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. What? <laughs> what? I don't re remember any rule like that. Actually, I just came up with it. I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, your lovely student life would be all over, right? Exactly. Damn, they address it, man. They address it. I gotta give this game. I gotta give it to this game, man. Every time, you know, well, not every time. Most of the times I've said, like, well, what if they do this? The game thinks of it and they, br and they bring it up later. Some things they don't. And that, that's been frustrating, but, but like, a, way more than any other game. The victim was Chihiro uh, Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. The body was discovered in the girls' locker room on the second floor of the school. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard Chihiro talk about it, right? All I need... Dude? You're calling her a dude? Eh, okay. There's a dumbbell on the floor and... This is a blood stain. There's a blood stain on the dumbbell. Hmm. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. It's an e-handbook? Looks like there's three of them. It seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this... Ah, so someone just used a dead student's handbook to get in? Lily's actual favorite joke is 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 an anti joke, which is weird because Lily, Lily doesn't really like meta humor and anti humor and everything like that. Lily's favorite joke is Joe. Ha 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 ha. Her favorite joke is, why did the monkey fall out of the tree? Because it was dead. <laughs> but her fa her favorite joke that's a proper joke is fairly long. The seven dwarves. Decide to leave Snow White and go on a, a, a very pressing matter to the Vatican to see the Pope. All seven dwarves pile in to the main hall to meet the Pope, and they're all there. Uh, what are the seven dwarves again? Uh, Sleepy, um, Dopey, Doc, Grumpy, Hungry, um, Sneezy, whatever, whatever the fuck. They, they all pile in. Uh, and Doc comes forward as the representative of the group and says to the Pope, uh, Your Highness, your, your Popeliness, we have a pressing question for you today. Are there any nun dwarves in the Vatican? And the Pope says, I'll have to think about it. And he stands there for a few minutes and then he, he, says, he shakes his head and says, No, there are no nun dwarves or dwarfs that are nuns. In, in, in the Vatican. Behind them, some of the dwarfs start... Some Behind Doc, some of the dwarfs start to laugh. Doc stays serious and steps forward and says, Your your popeliness, your your, your, your popeness, are there any <laughs> dwarf nuns in all, of, in, all of, in all of Italy? And the Pope says, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to check for you. 
And, the doc, and doc says, will you, will you please check for me? And the Pope says, okay, because you're one of the seven dwarves. I'm a big fan. I'll, I'll go check. So he, he goes and he's, he's gone for a while. He comes back a, 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 an hour later. He sits down and he says, no, there, there are no dwarf nuns in all of Italy. Behind Doc, the dwarves are starting to laugh even harder now. Doc steps forward once again. Your Popeliness, I'm sorry, I must ask again. Are there any dwarf nuns in all the world? And the Pope says, that I, I don't know. That's that's a hard question. I'll have to I'll have to go and search and send out all of my cardinals and 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 and, and, and call to every church and cathedral in, in all the world to find out. And Doc says, Will you please do it? It's very important. The Pope leaves. He's gone for several days. He finally comes back, tired and haggard. He hasn't slept the whole time. He sits down in his Pope chair and strokes his Pope chin and says, There are no dwarf nuns in all the world. Behind Doc, the dwarves erupt into laughter. Doc starts laughing himself, all except Dopey, and they start chanting, Dopey fuck the penguin, Dopey fuck the penguin, Dopey fuck the penguin. That's Lily's favorite joke. Strange. That's strange. One of the handbooks won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbooks showed Junko's name when I started it up. Then the other one would turn on must be Leon's, right? There's no way it would break that easily. Oh, but even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. I won't let Genocide Jack have control. Like a split personality sort of thing? Although, judging by the smudges in the dust, it looks like there was something inside. A coin. I wonder what it was. Was it a coin? Hmm. There was an extension cord plugged in there. It proved very useful while I was in the library. In other words... I already words, told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> My family is a member of that council. And I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. I think you're gonna get... 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 deaded, Makoto. Why would he tell you this? To begin, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. For the second characteristic, where the victims are suspended, the only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. All the killers, countless victims, were killed and suspended in exactly the same way. In the scene of every murder, the word bloodlust was left in victims' own blood. These are both... Are they all guys, too? Hmm. It's the bloodstained poster. The blood is the most noteworthy, noteworthy part, but... Big-breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable, too. The girls' locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you'd find something like this. Ooh, have they been switched? Is this is this the boys' locker room and someone switched the name of it? So, so, so Toko is candle, candle, can, candlestick, uh, Genocide Jack. Akechi figures it out. Has all the evidence. Talk, confront sir, make sure of it too. They and, and he says, promise you won't kill anyone, you need to suppress it while you're in here. Then he he ki kills Chihiro, knowing the real candlestick jack is actually in here as this foolproof thing. Because if if the real genocide jack is actually in here and you find out, and it is her, and she even confesses to it, I am genocide jack. No one's gonna believe her because she is actually a murderer. And then and then we we convict her when it was him all along. And he was was pinning it on her in order to, to get away with it because Because they need to look really goddamn fucking guilty. And that's what this whole thing is. That's what I think is going on. I think I think that's what it is. I think that's what he did. The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Huh? This rope has a plug. Wait, so then, this isn't a rope at all. And the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. Trigger's fatal injury was a blow to the head. But seeing them again after looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit with the boys' locker room. And there's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Anyway, the other day I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room, and it left a stain. A stain. 
but I don't see any stain on the carpet now. Of course. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain has disappeared. He switches. He switches the boys and girls signs to take her into the other room so he can use his own card, I guess, or, or, or whatever. And, 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 and not any problems. Or, I don't know, or Leon's. I don't know. There's something about Leon's broken one. But I just don't get if, if he can use Leon's broken one. Why does he just use Sayaka's or 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 or, um, or uh, whatever the fuck her name was? Junko, Junko. Just like on, she's completely forgettable. Yeah, there's something, there's something weird about that. Oh, that's right. Bayakuya was using an extension cord. Okay, that's why it is then. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if. Last night I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. Hmm. What are you doing out this late? Oh, um. I was just... What do you have a... It looks like, like a, a boy's shirt in your bag. Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket okay, sticking so out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Chihiro's voice actress really gave it her all. Really gave it her all. She stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yeah. Hey, Ali, how's it going? It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? Or was she not actually a girl? Oh, God. Is that the answer? Is she not a girl? I said it as a joke and it kind of went bing in my head. Really? Oh, God damn it. That's... Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my... Fucking god. That's it, isn't it? That's it. That's why she was in the in, in the boy in, in the boys one and they moved her over to the girls one to make it look like a girl did it. Cause it's cause cause it's supposed to be genocide jack. Oh for fuck's sake. So is that is that what is that why Kyoko said you should really examine the corpse really really well and he's like well there I have my limits but she's like no you should and he's like oh it's an extension cord instead of a rope how did I miss this before and Kyoko's like you goddamn moron like of course you saw it was an extension cord not a rope and it's like <laughs> and so the curtain opened once again a deadly judgment a deadly deception a deadly betrayal a deadly <laughs> It's the same deadly shit again. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly game grump. A deadly faith. A deadly class trial. Um, finish, yeah. Here we go. What kind of blunt instrument could it have been? Locker and dumbbell. I bet it was an iron pipe. No, that's wrong! No! What? I bet it was an iron pipe. Interesting. <laughs> That certainly would make for Chihiro's killer is... Candlestick Jack. Fiendish serial killer. Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. You, you basically said what he just said, but re rearranged. There's just no proof for it. Wait, that's wrong. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. <laughs> no, that's wrong. Ah, uh, no. It's actually blood lust. The other char characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know. The bloody message left behind, how the victim was positioned, where the murder took place, how the victim was positioned. I got it! I got it. Schizo? Really? That's the word? You want schizo? Oh god, what are you doing game? No! Really? Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? I hope that's a translation thing, because that's- I, I, I don't think that's a, a nice way to say that, is it? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I don't think that's a nice way to say it. The one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality has to do with her behavior. Her behavior changed. Her- she arrived like- r really? This is- this is one? Okay, her behavior I changed. It. I got it! Wow, you solved this one. You're talking is the tongue gonna be out now? Oh my- Well, hello there! Oh. Is it me you were hoping to see? Oh god! Oh god! Oh, and and the bouncing avatar. Oh, god. Oh, kill it! Kill it with fire! Kill! I hope it is her now. I hope I hope it she didn't frame. I hope it is her. Get it away! Get god damn it! What the hell? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, genocide Jack. Or better yet, let's go with genocide Jill. Yeah, I made that joke before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High five! High five! High five candlestick. When you compare your past murders to this, what, is, what do the other two have to do with the modus operandi matches? No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Okay, that's kind of vague. And 
Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. Yeah, they want the milk part of the brewing process when they have tea. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. Whoa, hey, don't don't you be critical of Chef Goddamn Boyardee, okay? Hey, Chef Boyardee gets gets people through college, okay? You leave Chef Boyardee out of this. Like, sure, it may be really gross, and it's kind of disgusting. And no matter which one you get, it all seem, tastes the same. It's cheap, and that's all that matters. There's one clear difference between the murders. The victims fail injury, the style of the blame message, the victims fail injury. I got it! That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. Uh, what was used to suspend her. I got it! I got it! Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong! Big Mac? <laughs> We're Big Mac? I love it! I love it! We're Big Mac! Big Mac? I know why she couldn't have killed Chihiro. Because Chihiro was a girl. I got it! I got it! Da, 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 da. Oh! Shit. Alright, well, we're not giving her scissors. We're not giving her scissors. She'd be like, these are shitty scissors. I have my own scissors. What is this pose right now? One person who could have could have who could have copied the genocide jack cases. Uh Leon! Yeah, Leon! Here's my answer! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! Oh, the tongue got even longer as she said that. That's an interesting detail there, game. Oh my god. So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' exactly. locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy. Exactly. Oh god, I'm Hifumi. The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girl's locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. Right. Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. I'd never seen that rope before in my life. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? Is there a third layer to this? Because because so far we've called out all of this. Is there a third layer? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Tried to catch these remarks just now. There's something in there that concerns me. The scene of the crime. I got it! Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? I need to just focus on those things that got switched. I got it! A picture of a big boob supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Boob lust. Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? The boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. While I was in the girl's locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. I got it! I got it! In fact, I found it on the boy's locker room carpet. In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. Wait, that's wrong. I'm talking about Leon's No, handbook. that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Because Leon's handbook was broken. Why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. What? This girl is... Is what? Is a boy! Still alive. Oh, a boy. Ah, I see. So, she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. He's, uh, he's really happy right now, huh? He's, he's really, he's, he's chuffed. He feels he's chuffed. What? I am not the culprit. 
I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room and decided to alter it. There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer is a guy. The killer is Genocide Jack. The killer is a girl. The killer is a girl. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, right, 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 right. Sorry, 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 sorry. Shoot! Yeah, you're right. Because how did they get into the boys' locker room? Yeah, you're right. Because Leon, because Leon's is broken. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? Nobody. The killer. And only no, the that's killer. wrong. Okay, all right. That's kind of no, dumb, but all right. If if Chad Ketchy's answer for why he he did the crime like that was just because because I felt like it, I'm gonna be pretty mad. But if his answer is Oh, it was to test us all to make sure that we were always thinking and looking past different different answers and everything. It was it was it was to make us better investigators. I'm still gonna be a little mad. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? So what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him. My tracksuit is black. I have a white tracksuit personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Oh. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? So, let you- The killer was wearing the same blue tra- No, that's wrong! No, that's wrong! She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you- You just- So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Wow, the tongue is really long now. It it really did get longer. Holy shit. Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. Why? But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. It's his hair. Because I hate him. <laughs> okay, I'm doing that one for fun. <laughs> There was a certain turning point that ticked me off. <laughs> Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him oh, as dude. Oh, damn. That was actually a thing? That was on purpose? I remember pointing that out. Holy shit. Really? Oh, well done, game. Well done. I didn't kill anyone. It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. Uh, Chihiro. I got it! Got it. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. It's not the stupid sauna scene, is it? The extreme heat did it? How did the handbook break? There's only one possible explanation. By exploding a bug, by hacking it, hitting it, hitting its weak point? Hitting its... I'm gonna guess weak point. I got it! I got it. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... Hifumi. When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! Okay, so it was the stupid sauna scene. Alright. Okay. I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... Here's my answer! And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! No, that's wrong! No, that's wrong! The killer is... you! First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. Nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? 
simple. Because she was really a he. Which is why he was able to use his own e-handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro. Okay, so I have questions. I have quite So I think I feel like they have to acknowledge the fact that he went down and got the girl's handbook from the from the mailbox and knew about that. I feel like they need to acknowledge that. But I also like so he he moved the body into the girl's locker room to make it appear that a girl did it, because a girl would only have access to it, but he didn't really think that through very well, did he? Because Eventually, it's going to come out that the, the the things in the mailbox are there. Like it seems like everybody knows. Danny even knew, and Danny's an Danny's an idiot. Um, th th this was his chance. What what the what the fuck is Mondo's secret then? He seems this seems pretty desperate. I guess it wasn't really premeditated. Hmm. Okay, I guess it's all right. And attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. Yeah. First, Pulling up the bloodstained carpet, then removing the bloody poster. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. Okay, so they acknowledge it. Alright, that's good. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. And they acknowledge it wasn't really planned, it was in the heat of the moment, so he just took this opportunity and, and tried to pin it on a girl. And then no one would be able to do it. But then, I, I feel like he's he's pretty dumb because they're, they're gonna look at the body. Like, I mean... Kyoko did, and some of the others were, were kind of dumb not to, to look at the body. But yeah, I don't know. It's also Mo Monokuma not, not using any, you know, uh, any pronouns as well is is, is, is a bit I, I, eh, off, you know, because he knew. But yeah, this this is not a really good plan, but I guess it, it doesn't need to be. But then, I don't know, Akechi better have a really good reason for why he did what he did. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Hyakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. So, does Akechi just like going into the girls' locker room randomly then? Or did he did he hear something? Did he... Did, was he just out wandering and he saw something happening? Was he out looking for someone to kill and he saw Mondo run away or something? Like, because right now he's he's just like... <laughs> doop -do -doo, time to go into the girls' locker room. bum ba bum 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 You know, like... <laughs> And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade... It's facade. The killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. Chihiro's handbook.
And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. Huh. I don't know about that, Big Mac. It says Leon's handbook is the one that accessed the, the, the locker room. I think it was Leon. I think it was 11037. And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? Let's talk a little bit about Fever Time and... <sighs> Niga Time. If the opponent activates... <sighs> Nega Time. I refuse to vote. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. You're wrong. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Show me some evidence. You should prove it. <laughs> okay, got him. <laughs> if my thinking so far is right. Did not deserve. I didn't know what I was doing. Didn't deserve that. <laughs> Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. Yeah, I did it. I killed him. Okay, I'm kind of curious. Do I get to vote? I can't remember. If I vote for somebody else, now nah, they, they do the voting. Okay, I was going to say, if I vote for somebody else and everyone else votes for Mondo, then does it matter? Okay, let's see. We're living with a goddamn serial killer now, so... She needs to get tied up. Like, there needs to be a jail and and ha has to go to jail. Like, there's, there's no way we're just going to let a serial killer just walk the fuck around. Right? Right? Right, Danganronpa pals? Like, there's no way. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. The biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. Um... You know what Mondo did? He Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't... Like, accidentally, I hope. He killed his own brother. Mondo's older brother's name was Daya Owada? Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. Peaches and gravy? But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. The guy got stronger. Just... Stronger than Daya. Same thing that Chihiro wanted. And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy stuck, struck, stuck, struck. Crazy Diamond? The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into onco oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Okay, so he didn't kill his brother. He's partly responsible, but he didn't kill his brother. Brother chose it. Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault. But Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey kid, the rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Cause it's the team you and me put together. It's a, pr a promise between men. He decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother, he could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his big brother. Daya was going to lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. I want to change. I wrap myself, up, wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. 
His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I was jealous. I was jealous of Jihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I'd never had. So I was jealous of him, and that jealousy broke me. Bear has the hair. The cage of death? Alright. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna go so fast that he's, that he's gonna just like fall apart? So it became electrified? Okay. Where is he? believe it's not Mondo. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. Fuck you. That was a really bad reason. That's a really shitty reason. That's stupid. Okay, the game just lost a little bit from me. Sorry. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? There's one thing I'd like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. Oof! Hoo ha! My, my! You really took me by surprise there! I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Okay, so there's another student see, called it. That's my ace in the hole. Okay, well, I have no idea who that is that he's talking to. Hey, I'm Grump. I understand the girl killed somebody. What the fuck is that all about? <laughs> 